what's happening everyone the big thing is happening right now in 2024 with gmail and yahoo updates now you probably know it already or maybe you are not uh you really have to prepare for your uh email deliverability when it comes to uh, gmail and yahoo they recently updated it i think it's going to be executed around next month around uh, february uh in 2024 so what happens is now uh, Gmail and Yahoo is getting really strict about sending an email to someone else. Okay, so what it means is that now they are requiring so many things to make sure uh, your email is legit. Okay, and there are many factors you have to also think about uh, getting into their primary inbox instead of getting into spam box. So today, in this video, I'm going to walk you through entirely from A to Z how you can increase your go high level email deliverability in 2024 using GoDaddy and Namecheap. I know so many people are making video with the Cloudflare, uh, but you have to understand, I use Cloudflare, I use GoDaddy, I use Namecheap, I use Bluehost, I'm still using it right now, but I don't really see that big difference, okay? So um, for me, I like to use GoDaddy the most, but I know some of you are using Namecheap too, so I'm going to share with you a GoDaddy and Namecheap. Uh, last year, I made this video about how to set it up your dedicated domain in your Go High level, and I got huge views and I got huge uh, 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 comments and asking for help. And I found out that uh, there's not that many people making video with this with GoDaddy and Namecheap. So today, again in 2024, totally revised, uh, updated uh, uh, how to you can set it up your Go High level account with dedicated domain with using GoDaddy and Namecheap completely from A to Z. So please stay with me until the end of this video and I show you, you can actually increase your deliverability tremendously in 2024. So you don't need to worry about your email get landing in their, uh, your client's uh, spam box, okay? So uh, here are the few uh, uh, things I'm gonna go over. I'm on, there are many tech stuff that moving around. Uh, but today I'm going to show you basically what you really, really, really have to set it up. Okay. So the first thing is these three things. Now there are some new requirements when it comes to sending a box uh, emails, right? Now, the first thing is, uh, you have to somehow authenticate your email domains always with DKIM, SPF and DMARC. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to go too deep into what these are, just know DKIM, SPF, and DMARC has to be set up in your dedicated domain in your Go High Level account. Um, in the in the past, DMARC wasn't actually really mandatory. It was just the optional to increase your deliverability a little more. But uh, nowadays, uh, because of the uh, Gmail and Yahoo update, uh, these three things are now mandatory. Right? You have to set it up in order for your um, uh, emails to end up in the in primary inbox. So DKIM, SPF, and DMARC has to be set up. I'm gonna walk you through how you uh, you can create this easily uh, using free tools uh, in your Go High Level account. Okay. Now the second thing is uh, you must enable easy on subscription. What it means is that now Gmail and Yahoo are requiring senders to make sure people can unsubscribe your email easily from your emails. All right. So now, but this part, you don't really need to do any part because by default in your Go High Level account, uh, I will show you where that is later on. Um, um, Go High Level already, already updated, uh, putting this unsubscription link conveniently and easily for uh, your leads and your clients can unsubscribe your link easily. So this part, it's already, it's already done for you. So you don't, need to you don't need to think about too much, but I will show you where, where you can uh, turn this on. And then last thing is, you gotta make sure you, uh, you are sending on emails that people want to open your email, okay? This thing has to be done on your side. So please make sure you check your email analysis to make sure who is how much the rate of the opening, clicking, uh, bouncing, you really have to look into it carefully and make sure your uh, subject line, your uh, context of your email has to be providing some value to your clients so they want to see your, uh, read your email over and over again. So this is the thing you have to do it on, uh, on your site consistently. Now, so this number one and number two, authenticating email domains with DKIM, SPF, and DMARC, we're gonna do it together. And I'm gonna show you where that you can turn this on, your on subscription link by default. So, uh, so these two things will be done uh, automatically with you in this video. 
and I'm going to show you how you can make sure you uh, uh you uh, set up your emails every single time when you send it out so you don't actually uh, don't red flag all right so there's a thing that I'm going to go through one at a time the first thing is in ways to increase your go high level email deliverability these are the six things that I'm going to show you in this video beginning to the end I'm not hold I'm not going to hold my back at all I'm going to show you exactly how you can set it up from A to Z so in this video if you watch this you don't need to buy any courses to set it up okay this is all you need to set up all right so our uh, first thing is let's set up SPF and DKIM and DMARC first okay uh, so I'm going to use uh, GoDaddy and Namecheap in this video so let me get into the our dummy account now this is my dummy account in uh, my this is GoFounder box uh, let me introduce you our uh, Y labeled go high level account uh, uh, our brand is GoFounder box and we added a tons of inside and we repackaged it in something new so uh, with this GoFounder box we actually uh, built a multi six figure business in 2023 and we won a SaaS printer award from go high level last year and we are still going on right now. So this is what our account is. I just give you a little, you know, head up what this account is all about. So, um, so right now this is my demo account, and I'm going to show you how we set up your dedicated domain with DKIM, SPF, and your DMAR. All right. So, uh, on when you log into your account on your left side menu bar, make sure go to the settings, and then you have to look for email services. Okay. I'm going to click email services right here. Now, um, I already have uh, one uh, by default set up. So I'm going to create a new one and walk you through how you guys can set it up. So uh, on the right top right here, you will see it says dedicate domain and IP. Click this button. And I'm going to create a new one here. Uh, uh, these two were already uh, created for the uh, education purpose in our uh, membership site, in our uh, co uh, private community. So today I'm going to create from scratch from new. So when you get into this page, you're not going to see anything here. It will be empty. So all you need to do is just click Add Domain. And now it's going to ask you to enter domain name. Now, when you write this domain name uh, using GoDaddy or Namecheap, my recommendation is when, okay, when you can create any name you want with your domain. So today I'm going to use a dummy uh, domain, which I already created, FunnelBox that is. So you have to create your subdomain. Subdomain means you cannot just put it in your domain.com. It's not going to work. You have to something put on the front. We call the subdomain, for example, contact.yourdomain.com. You can name anything you want, guys. You can, you can just put your, my name too, or ronald.yourdomain.com. Whatever that is, name it. But my recommendation is do not use a subdomain name such as email. Don't do that because uh, GoDaddy, especially GoDaddy is already using this name as their email service dedicated domain. So when I was doing this, uh, there was some conflict happened and there was errors happening and I couldn't really figure it out. But later on, I found out that GoDaddy is when there are when you purchase business email uh, in GoDaddy, uh, they are using email that your domain dot com as a dedicated domain. So uh, it's going to conflict. So don't use that. And also do not use mailbox dot your domain dot com. It's also going to conflict. So in some other domains. So do not use that. So I like to use something like support.yourdomain.com or contact.yourdomain.com or info.your. So today I'm going to use info, okay? Info.yourdomain.com is my dedicate domain subdomain name, okay? So choose which one or you want to use. Always keep it simple. It doesn't matter. No one's going to see this uh, subdomain name. It will be only used internally in your Go High Level email services, uh, services system. So name it whatever you want. I'm going to just use info that and I'm going to put my domain name here, which is funnel box that is. So I'm going to put funnel box that is. Oh, oops. Sorry about that. I'm going to I'm going to start with my go uh, go daddy first, not the name chip. Um, I got to choose the domain name. Sorry about that, guys. So what I'm going to choose is your uh, bsolution.com. So uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to change the domain name. So info dot your bs solution dot com. Okay. 
So please, they type it in everything. Uh, make sure the, uh, you spelled it right. Uh, so uh, you can name anything on the front, info, support, contact, but that, it has to be your domain name, okay? So make sure you uh, set it up something like this. So right now, uh, in, in this example, I'm using info that your BS solution that which is my domain okay so after you uh, set your name uh, just all you need to do is just click add and verify add and verify now your uh, my name is already here now my recommendation is I know if you already have uh, GoDaddy all you need to do is just click continue then the go high level system already zinc with GoDaddy already so it's gonna set up everything for you automatically but in this video I'm gonna do it manually to show you how we do it so I'm gonna click add record manually. Now then it's gonna show you one, two, three, four, five DNS record that you have to set it up. There's two TXT record, there's one C name and there's two MX record. So we're gonna start with GoDaddy in this video, okay? After that, I will show you the name chip. So the first thing is, um, it's GoDaddy. So I'm gonna copy TXT record first. I'm gonna copy this one, click it, and I'm gonna go into my uh, GoDaddy account and I'm gonna go into my domain. And then I'm going to go into my DNS record, manage domain. And then I'm going to go into DNS. And now here, I'm going to add new record. It's going to be TXT. And I'm going to paste that thing that I just copied. Now, here's the caveat. Okay, it's not done yet. Make sure you delete the, your domain name. Okay, I'm going to delete my domain name right here right before the info which is my subdomain name okay what i'm what i'm trying to tell you here is we just created my subdomain name info.europeasolution.com but when you are setting this dns record into your uh, godaddy or name chip later on it's all same do not you have to exclude the name of your actual domain okay so my domain name is this europeasolution.com do not include here you have to erase it you have to delete it okay so uh, in this video, if you look at here, it will be mail to dot underscore domain key dot info. It could be any name that you named it. That's all you need. All right. Now we're going to copy the value. So we're going to go back and I'm going to copy require value right here. Just click this uh, this copy copy icon and I'm going to go back to GoDaddy and for the value, I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to to one hour and save. And if it's all right, then it's going to say success. So we are done with the one. Now we're going to go to the second TXT. Same thing. Click copy. Go back to uh, your GoDaddy and add new record. Go to TXT. Name. Paste. As I said before, you have to delete your domain name like what I'm doing right now with the dot. That's it. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to copy the value of that second TXT dot. And then I'm going to paste and I'm gonna put it into one hour. Now, if you look at this uh, 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 value right here, it says V equals SPF one include dot mailgun dot org or this is the what uh, F SPF uh, uh, record. If you look at here, that is the F SPF. Okay, so you are setting up your SPF at the same time. So let's go back and then um, let's go to GoDaddy. I'm gonna click save. And then we're going to go for the next one, which is C name, copy. I'm going to go back to GoDaddy and I'm going to add new record, choose a C name, paste. But always make sure erase the name of your uh, domain name, okay, with the dot. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to copy the value of the C name right here. Go back to GoDaddy, paste the value, one hour, save. Boom, done. I'm gonna go back. Now we have two more MX to do. So I'm gonna click first MX record, click it, go back, and new record, look for the MX record, paste, priority, always 10. And then we're gonna, okay. So uh, it's the same as the, the all, the, it's always the same, guys. Make sure you delete the name of your domain like this, what I'm doing right now. Oops, info. And then priority 10, go to value. I'm going to copy the value of my first MX record. Go to GoDaddy. And I'm going to paste value right here. And one hour and save. 
And then when she's updated, success, it's good. Now, the last MX record, copy, go to GoDaddy. It just rinse and repeat, guys, okay? It's very simple, MX, paste. Always make sure you erase and delete the name of your domain with the dot. That's it. And then priority, 10. And then value is going to be this one, okay? Go to GoDaddy, paste right here, one hour save boom your dedicated domain is all set up okay let's check it out so we're going to verify the record it make sure everything is correct i'm going to click verify and let's check it out now you will see something like this all the time but don't worry it's just a process all we need to do is make sure all this uh, yellow icon with not verified turn into all verified with a green mark okay green background so I'm just click verify domain over and over again until you see everything has been verified. So I'm gonna click verify domain again. See, now it's all verified, right? But you will see some is not verified and some is not, it's okay, don't worry. It just takes some time to populate all this into the internet space. You gotta, you gotta just let it, let it, you know, give a little time and just keep uh, clicking verify domain. Right now, once it's done, on the left top, click this blue uh, text back to dedicate domain. And then we're going to check this out. So if you look at here, info.europeasolution.com is right now SSL unknown with this red mark, right? Don't worry. It's just, uh, it's just a uh, uh, normal uh, process, okay? So all you need to do is just click verify now again one more time. And then I'm going to click verify domain again until I see everything turn into SSL issued with active with green mark. Done. So this is all done. See, it's not really hard, right? That's right. But here's the problem. How about the DMARC? Now, in our, uh, if, you, if, you, if we go back to uh, this domain, this one right here, this one is the SPF that we, I mentioned in the beginning, SPF. Then what, where's DKIM? Well, DKIM is this one, the long, big one right here. That's the DKIM. So you already set up your, uh, let me just go back. So you already set up your DKIM and SPF record already when you are creating your own dedicated domain. The problem is DMARC is not there. So we have to do it manually. So I will show you how we can set it up. So even though it's, it says it's all active and it's all very verified, issued, no, it's not complete. All right, there's one thing missing, which is a DMARC. So in, we have to set DMARC in your uh, GoDaddy domain. So in order to do that, there are free tools you can use. So when you go into Google, uh, I, I, I'm also gonna put the link video, uh, video so you guys can check it out. Uh, just type it in easy DMARC, easy D mark. Okay, easy DMARC. And then you will see something like this, easy DMARC, just, Click, open it. Now, you don't need to sign up, okay? You don't need to sign up anything. You don't need to log in, you don't need to sign up. Now, on the top, you will see it says product, right? When you hover over your mouse, you will see this big pop-up, says DMARC. All you need to do is just go to DMARC record generator. So I'm gonna click this. And here, they are already giving you a free tool to create, so you can create a DMARC record in their uh, website. So it's really cool. I like to use this all the time. So for the domain is going to be info dot, or you can just put it in your domain.com, totally fine, but I like to specify it all the time. So I'm gonna type it in info, which is my dedicated domain, info dot your BS solution.com. That's it, all right? My recommendation is do not use your domain name directly because later on, if you are running some kind of cold emailing with the, uh, uh, your domain with a business email, then you have to set it up another DKIM and all that DMARC all separately. So my recommendation is just use your dedicated domain name is the best way to go. So right now my dedicated domain in my go higher level was info.europeasolution.com. So it's going to be something that your domain.com. So Go there and type that in. Make sure your spelling is correct. Policy type is none. This is what uh, uh, I found out one of the blog and document that Gmail is recommending for DMARC, the policy type to be a none. So, okay, choose none. 
Report sent to is going to be your business business email that you created in your domain. So for now, mine uh, mine is hello dot solution dot com. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the email right here. Failure report sending to same email is my same uh, domain name, and then subdomain policy. Make sure you just go for the none. On uh, SPS identifier alignment, I'm just gonna go into relaxed. DKIM identifier alignment, just go for the relaxed. And then everything is set to go. And just click generate. Boom, now we have DMARC record right here. So what I'm gonna do is, um, if you are uh, considering to use your own main domain name to create DMARC, then uh, just copy the DMARC, this word, and go there and start setting it up. But for me, I used my dedicate subdomain name, which is info.europeansolution.com. So you don't need to copy the whole thing. You don't need to just copy underscore dmark.info, which is for, in my case, is that that's the only thing I'm going to copy. Okay. As I said, you don't need to copy your domain name. Okay. So I'm going to copy that. It's txt record, by the way. So I'm going to go to my GoDaddy and I'm going to create a new txt. And then here, I'm gonna uh, paste that in, see, dmark underscore dmark.info. And then I'm gonna copy the value right here. Just click copy button and then go to GoDaddy and paste it in one hour and save. Okay, success, done. Now you are fully authenticated. How cool was that? Pretty easy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna leave dmark record right here for the uh, for the uh, name chip later on. So I'm gonna show you, you will see it again when we, when we do it with the name chip. So uh, as here, we are already done with uh, SPF and DKM, DMARC, and you already save your dedicated domain for your Go High Level uh, email service, already done. So this part is all done now, okay? So we're gonna go back and check it out. See, info.yourbusiness.com is all active and it's all issued. So now, very simple. Now, here's the thing. Just doing by this alone, you pretty much set up your dedicated domain for your, your, for your email services, everything by the book. But how can you increase your email delivery more and more and more so your email will never end up in the spam box? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to show you one more time this. So we're gonna go through everything one by one right here. So all the way up to one to six. This is what I'm going to show you how to set up in your Go High Level account. Now, next thing is list cleanup. I will explain to you what list cleanup is all about. Oh, so before we, I go to everything one by one, let me go into name chip first. Sorry about that, guys, okay? So I'm gonna create another one for name chip. So I'm gonna add another dedicated domain, and then I'm gonna uh, name info, same, dot, funnel box, that is. So that is my domain name for name chip right now. So I'm gonna use info dot, funnel box that is. In your case, it's going to be info.yourdomain.com, okay? So uh, that's for the, uh, this is for the uh, name chip guys, okay? It's pretty much the same, all the process is pretty much the same, except there's one thing that is very different from when it comes to name chips. So I will show that later on. So info.funnel box that is, 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 this is what I'm going to use for the dedicate domain. Now I'm gonna click add and verify, okay? <clears throat> And now name is correct. So I'm going to put add record manually. Here, I'm going to click copy. Same thing. The process is always the same, guys. So I'm going to start with TXT record. I'm going to copy the host. I'm going to go into my name chip. So I'm going to look for my domain right here, funnel box that is. And I'm going to click manage. And I'm going to go into advanced DNS. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I think I am using this in my uh, cloud fair. So let me change the domain, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, let me check. Let me go to my domains. Let me choose the one that I'm not using in the uh, in. Maybe I think this is the one I'm. Oh. This is I have to renew. Nope. Um, let me check. Maybe I can use this one. 
oh not this one sorry about that guys this little minor interruption because i'm using so many domains in my business domain list um what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna use this one uh go to gofunnelbox.org i'm gonna i'm gonna click manage so i'm gonna go back i'm gonna change the name i'm gonna uh, go back and i'm gonna just cancel so i have to change my domain name because of the different domain i'm using in nameship so i'm gonna use go funnelbox.org okay so i'm gonna click uh let me see if spelling is all right go funnelbox .org. okay i'm gonna click add and verify and i'm gonna go for manually now i'm gonna copy the this text record first click go back oops name chip and here i'm gonna go to advanced dns oh this one is the uh, same thing too sorry about that guys uh jesus i hate cloudflare i don't know why i'm using it um uh, maybe i'm gonna use this one um let me check i'm gonna go to manage go to advanced yep i can use this one so i'm gonna go back to go funnel box and let me change the domain name okay sorry about that guys right here that domain already uh, pointing to email server you uh, mxsp record are recommend oh so maybe i was using the same name so i'm going to change that into co uh, contact so um okay so i'm going to start over again so i don't want to get confused so please name i think you should know how to name your dedicated domain already okay so what i'm doing is i'm using contact contact that aichatfunnelbot.com so this is the domain i'm using and contact is the one i'm putting in as a subdomain for my dedicated domain so uh, i'm gonna click add and verify and let's see it's gonna yep it works now i'm gonna click add record and i'm gonna copy the txt exactly the same i'm gonna go to uh, name chip right here so all you need to do is just click add new record and choose the txt record for the host paste it in but as i said before you have to delete the name of uh, your domain name right right before the the the, uh, the, the, the yeah, like this okay and then i'm gonna go back i'm gonna click uh, copy the recur value go back and here paste it in and then just click check mark done okay let's go for the next one second txt copy go to a name chip add new record and i'm gonna go for txt host paste now always this is the only thing you need to really be careful of Re erase the name of your uh, domain with the dot like this then you are done and then i'm gonna go back copy the uh, spf record right here click go back to name chip i'm gonna paste just click check mark done i'm gonna go back c name copy go to a uh, name chip now now this one is c name guys c name c name host copy always make sure you delete the name of your domain name with the dot like this and then i'm gonna go back copy the value go back paste automatic check mark saved now we're gonna do mx now this is the where it's very different from godaddy or other so other uh, domain hosting company from the name chip all right i will show you why first please call uh copy the uh the host name of the, your first mx record i'm gonna click copy now i'm gonna come here now you remember in godaddy right when you click add new record you can see the mx record right here right away so uh, there isn't any confusion but in name chip when you click add new record you are not gonna able to see mx record right here so then where do we uh where do we actually create mx record in name chip it's very simple if you scroll down a little bit you will see it says mail setting i always have i already have some stuff here so um if you look at here you will see mail setting right and then on the uh, right next to this uh, square uh, the, the question mark icon you should see something like uh, uh like no email server something like that okay then all you need to do is click this button and choose 
custom MX like this. Custom MX. You have to choose. You have to. It's like that. You have to scroll down, and you will see mail setting right here. Mail setting, and then on the right, choose the custom MX. Okay, and then you are going to add your MX record right here. So I'm going to click Add New. Same thing. As I said before, you have to delete, erase the name of your domain like that. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to copy this MX record, this one. And I'm going to come back for the value, paste, priority, always 10. And then just click check mark. Done. Same thing. Repeat again. The last MX record, click name chip your uh, mx record right here from mail setting not your uh, dns record right here now mail settings click add new record i'm gonna paste it in always make sure you delete the name of your uh, domain name with the dot and then go back copy the last uh, your uh, value name and then i'm gonna go to name chip paste priority 10 and check mark boom all done guys okay this is how you set up in your name chip uh, account so i hope this was very clear right so but as i said before let's try it out let's test if, if everything is verified i know this video is a little long because this as i said before this is a complete a to z training how to increase your deliverability in go high level right i'm showing you completely how we do it uh, but if you get hang of it, it doesn't really take that long. It takes about like less than five minutes. You can set the whole thing up really quick. All right. It doesn't even uh, consume a lot of time to do this. So, so uh, the process is always the same. Okay. Process is always the same. So the, the uh, uh, oops, why is it not working? Maybe uh, just let me check. Uh, what happened? I think. Let me, oh, I'm just going to delete this domain. Sorry about that. Okay, and I'm gonna delete this one too because I don't want you guys to get, get confused what's going on here. All right, so right now, uh, contact.aichatfunnelbot.com is only red, right? So we're gonna click verify again one more time. And right now, only uh, two more to verify. So I'm going to click verify domain. It's all verified. I'm going to go back, click back to dedicate domain. And right now, it's still red, right? So all you need to do is just click verify again. And I'm going to click verify domain again. Boom. Right now, it's all verified. Now, as I said before, we only set up SPF and DKI, and you only set your dedicate domain. That's it. We still need to add the mark for this one too. So we're going to go back. I'm going to just copy this because that's the name I'm going to use. Come back. I'm going to come to easy D mark on the top, hover over your master product, and then look for the D mark record generator. Click here. I'm going to, uh, oops. I'm going to use this one. Click none. And it's going to be uh, contact at this one okay and then i'm gonna just copy this copy this subdomain policy none spf relaxed dkm relaxed and then everything set up just click generate boom done but as i said before do not include your the actual name of your domain only copy the one before the name of your domain, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna copy underscore dmark.contact is the one I'm gonna copy. And I'm gonna go to uh, name chip. And it's, this is for the TXT right here. So I'm gonna click add new record and look for the TXT. And host name is the one I just copied. Go to easy dmark and I'm gonna copy this one, the value. Go here, add and click all the way, done. This is how you set it up. Then you are all good to go. So now uh, with the name chip, uh, with the GoDaddy, uh, this account with the dedicated domain is all set up correctly. So we have done with the GoDaddy and name chip completely set up, uh, authenticated your email service, uh, your dedicated domain with SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. Now, next thing is list cleanup. What is list cleanup? It's like this. I know as you run your business in go higher level, you will have tons of email lists uh, growing, growing every day. 
The problem is, how are you going to clean it up? Are you going to do it manually all the time? Or is somebody, if, if, if and how are you going to track if someone, someone's email is bounced? Or maybe somebody gave you fake email, so it's got bounced. Maybe somebody's put your email to spam box, right? Or maybe somebody unsubscribe it. Even though somebody unsubscribe from your list, you will, you will see that list in your contact list all the time. It's very confusing. So what I'm going to do is I want to clean up my list all the time. Make it healthy all the time. Don't be afraid that people are going to unsubscribe or, uh, you know, deleting all the un unnecessary email in your contact list. Don't be afraid because having more healthy list is the better way to increase your deliverability at the same time, make more money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you automatically how you can set up your Go High Level account with your automations to clean up your list all the time. So I'm going to go into my account and I'm going to go back. Now in the Go High Level account, I will show you very simple automation. You can set it up with me today right now. So in your account, go to automation. Okay, now I uh, let me check if I already have it. I don't think I have it right now. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is, I don't think I set up. So I'm gonna create another folder. Always make sure having a folder is the best way to organize. I'm gonna type it in D and D. And then I'm gonna go into this folder and I'm gonna show you from scratch how we can create uh, the uh, list cleanup thing. So think about it. There's only three scenario to clean it up. Number one, if your email get bounced, we have to delete, uh, we have to clean it up that email list, okay? Second, if somebody gave you, uh, if, if somebody put your email to their spam box, then we also have to clean it up. Third, if somebody unsubscribe from list, we have to clean it up because if somebody's unsubscribe from your list, they don't want to, they, they don't want to receive your email anyway. So we clean it up. So this is a three scenario we're gonna use. So we're gonna go back to GoFundMe box. I, I go high level. So I'm gonna create a new workflow. The first, uh, first one is start from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is, number one, it's going to be bounced, okay? If anybody's email get bounced, then we are going to uh, delete them at the same time. So I'm gonna click. So it's going to be, the trigger is going to be email event, okay? So I always like to uh, oh, email event, but please, it's good to name it. So click add filter, event is bounced. Now make sure this only works in LC email and Mailgun only. If you are using Gmail work or workspace or, or send the grid or something else, then it's not gonna work. It only works in LC email and Mailgun only. So already keep that in mind. So if you create dedicated domain, that means you are using LC email, but that's how I recommend it for any beginners, uh, but because it's really easy to uh, configure, but at the same time, it's pretty same, okay? So uh, you have to choose bounced mailgun only. So when something is bounced, in our mailgun system and our LC email system, we can track which person's email got bounced, okay? It's not always correct, but it's, ha it's good to have one because it actually does work for you. So I'm gonna choose bounced mailgun only, and and then when somebody's email got bound, that means somebody gave you fake email and junky email. So we know it. Once it triggers, what I'm going to do is I always like to add contact, okay? Contact tag, because sometimes even though we're trying to uh, go through this entire flow, sometimes there's always glitch, something happens. So I like to know, uh, always, you know, trying to uh, organize my contact list. So I'm going to say bounce email bounce right here, and then I'm gonna save. Then after I give them a tag, I'm gonna remove them from all the workflow. So remove, oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna remove from our workflow, not this one, but remove from our workflow. And then second is going to be, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, enable DND, enable, Where's DND? DND? Yeah, enable DSF DND, right? So I'm going to enable DND for a specific channel, which is email. Okay. And then I'm going to delete contact. 
pretty cool, right? You can literally delete this person from your contact list right off now. Then why should I, why didn't I do this in the beginning? Well, as I said, there could be, a, it actually, it happened to me in the, uh, in, in the past. Actually, there was some glitch. So contact didn't get deleted, even though this email, this person's email was keep bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. It actually didn't delete this contact list. So my email was keep getting bounced over and over again from many people. So, oh, there is always glitch in the system, it's software, okay? So I always make sure everything is always safe. If I do this, even though per, uh, the contact list is not, have, it's not have, that person's contact list is not uh, deleted from my system, by my contact list, still, I remove them from the workflow so they never receive any email from me. And also I forcefully unsubscribe them from all my list, from my email list. So even though they didn't get deleted from my contact list, still they are not gonna get my email, okay? So this is how I uh, always make sure, uh, I, I kind of create some kind of safe system all the time. So this is how you create it. So we're gonna do this again with a spam, all right? So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna create another one, okay, for the spam. Or maybe, oh, sorry about that. What you can do here is, because I like to create a one by one to uh, make sure, um, you know, like, just give me a sec. You know, I like to create everything in, in one by one, but today, why not I show you how you can just make all this in one single workflow. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna uh, trigger, the first trigger event was bounced. Okay, bounced, sorry. Always name it, make sure. The second email email event is going to be spam, okay? So event is complaint, spam. And then second one is unsubscribe, okay? So I'm gonna say um, email event is unsubscribed, okay? I'm gonna type it in here, unsubscribed, okay? Like this. Now, this entire workflow will trigger whenever this happens, all right? And whenever this happens, everything will happen like this. We're gonna give them a tag, email bounced, all right, or maybe something else. You can give them a tag just bound or 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 not good email, whatever that is. You can also add more tag here if you want to. And then we're gonna remove all these people from the workflow, except in, uh, do not toggle this on, then then other things are not gonna work. So you have to toggle this off, okay, and save. And then we're gonna um, forcefully uh, enable, disable, uh, I mean, the, give them a, a forcefully unsubscribe from our contact uh, email list like this, and then we're gonna delete them from our contact list right off. So if you put something, like, I mean, there are many ways you can create this. You can also create if and else if you want to, totally fine. So what I'm saying is, um, this is how I create the uh, uh, sequence to do the job. So I'm gonna maybe, I'm gonna change name is to uh, delete bad list, something like that, okay? I'm gonna save. So this is the very basic thing you can set up. Now, if you wanna make more sophisticated, what I will show you is if and else. I'm gonna create a branch, right? So this one is for the bounced. Okay, I'm, and it's going to be, uh, whoops, a workflow trigger is email bounced. And then I'm gonna create another branch right here. And it's going to be spam. And it's going to be workflow trigger is spam. And I'm gonna make another add branch and it's going to be unsubscribe. So based on this action and, and splitting up in different cases, you can actually create another different kind of workflow as you want. So workflow trigger is email unsubscribe. Then I'm gonna click save action. Boom, like this. So I know we already created this. So all, you don't need to actually create everything one by one uh, manually. If you want to, it's good practice because you are learning. 
But if you uh, want to save your time, I will show you how you can do that. And what I'm going to do is right next to this ad tag, you will see this small uh, three dots next to it. Click it. I'm going to click copy, copy action, copy here. Same thing. I'm going to copy, copy action right here. Except tag has to be different because this one is bounce, but this one is spam. So I'm going to look for the spam email, uh, spam email. Okay, see, I have a different tag all the time. Same thing as unsubscribe too. Um, email, unsubscribe. See, uh, oops, DND, something like that. DND email, okay? DND means do not disturb. Same thing as unsubscribe. So that's how I uh, give them a different tag. And then remove from our flow. It's all same. So I'm going to just copy, copy, copy here. Same thing. Click three dots. Copy, copy action, copy here. Done. Same thing as this one too. Copy, copy. Oops. Oops. Yep. My mouse has a problem. Copy, copy, copy action, copy right here. See? It's very easy, right? And then we're going to delete all of them if you want to. So I'm going to click copy, copy, delete. Copy, copy, delete. And I'm going to save it. Now, so depending on something like this, then uh, they will. Uh, you can actually create a, a different scenario however you want, but this is basically how you can uh, create this very easy. Now, this is how you uh, set your automations and make sure you uh, publish it all the time, guys, okay? Uh, if you don't publish, it's not gonna work. So once you set something like this, then we just set up our list cleanup automation, all right? Very straightforward. Now, what's the next one? Engagement tracking. What is engagement tracking? It's like this. I We like to know who is opening your email and who is not opening your email, who is clicking your email. Depending on those actions, the engagement going on from your email, we like to like segment people a little bit more sophisticated. So in the future, we can use that data to do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to go out. So right now, so far, we have done number one and number two. So we're gonna go into number three right now, okay? So here, uh, on, the, on, on the bottom, go to settings. Go to settings. And then what you, uh, you will see, it says uh, manage scoring. Check this out, manage scoring. I'm gonna click this. Okay, manage scoring in your settings. Now, there is already pre-built uh, Go High Level engagement scoring. So depending on what people are doing, you can give them a people some kind of score. You can add a score, you can uh, sub subtract score. You can do so many things with it. With, with this data, we can do some a lot of stuff in the future. So the first thing that I like to do is if email is open, we give a one point. If appointment is confirmed, we give a one point. If contact reply and contact has tag, we give a one point. If contact book appointment in calendar, we give one point. Also, you can add another one too right here. If action email event is clicked, if somebody click anything in your in your email, right? We uh, give one point, like this. Add one point, right? So you can actually go through all this, uh, uh, however you want to uh, prefer. Uh, you can set this up. So what I usually do is I set up clicked. Then I give one point. If they open my email, I give one point. If they book appointment with me, then I give a two points because book appointment is a huge engagement, right? And so two point and I give, uh, if contact reply is two point, if they book appointment, it's two point. So I kind of create this kind of scenarios and then uh, I save it. So later on, you can see these people score uh, in their profile. So it's pretty cool. All you need to do is just click publish and save. All right, always this happens. Don't worry, just refresh this page one more time and save it, then it's gonna work, all right? Uh, I think they have some little glitch right now, but it's not a big deal. Every software has a glitch, but compared to other software, uh, Go High Level is by far is the best. Click Publish, Save, done, it's saved. Now, what I just did, very simply, we create engagement tracking, very simply. Right? Any beginner can do this right now. Now, what is feed loop back? Feed loop, feedback, feedback loop is a little thing that you have to do manually on your own, which is time to time, 
you look at this engagement tracking score and see who is not opening your email, who is not engaging at all, then later on you can segment them separately with the score and then you can send them email like, hey, I know you are not engaging with my email, anything going on right now? If not, I'm going to uh, delete your list from my contact list and you are not going to get anything from me in the future. So it's your decision. If you want to uh, still be on it, please reply back to this email and say yes. Something like that. That is what we call a feedback loop. All right. So once they send, uh, if anybody sends you a yes, that means they're going to get a one point. If they opened it, they get a two point. So now they, these people are coming back. If you are not, if you are not, if, they, if these people are still not engaged with the content, then we delete them or we segment them in different ways. So we don't need to send them an email again because every single time we send the email, everything is money. You are literally bringing your money out in the street. So we don't want that. So that's what you, that's what feedback loop means. And the segmentation is like, we already give people tags, right? So uh, whenever people sign up through your form or when they buy something from you, if something happens, we always give a tag to organize our contact list. That's what segmentation means. And unsubscribe is already done for you. As I explained before, uh, I will show you where that is. So um, for the uh, last one, the unsubscribe, uh, once you go into your setting, I'm going to show you here. Once you log into your account, right, go to settings and then go to business profile. Okay. And then you will see this uh, general section right here. So if you look at here, uh, make sure verify email address when first email sent. You have to make sure you shall check mark. So the unsubscribe link is the last one right here. Make email compliant by adding an unsubscribe link in your email by default. All right. Always make sure you check mark it. I mean, you can um, if you want if you want to make your custom unsubscribe link, then you can just uncheck it and create your own custom link. But that's not how I want. I like to just use the default ones because uh, Go High Level uh, is going to update a new unsubscribe link easily, so we can increase our deliverability in the future. So make sure this is where you have to make sure it's checked, and then your thing is all done. So in this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got a lot of value from me. So it was very simple, right? It wasn't that hard. So if you watch my video until this point, until the end, and if you follow me through entire from beginning to the end, then you actually set all this up already in this single video without you wasting any money buying courses. So it's pretty good. I know there are the more than miss the eye, but this is the basically what you have to do to set up your account correctly to increase your email, email deliverability in 2024. So thank you for watching this video. It's a very long video. I know it was 52 minutes, but it's full training. And I hope you got huge value out of this. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to really hang around, check the video below. And there is a link to our community. And there's uh, free resources. And also, you guys can uh, check out our Go High level if you want to hop in. And we do have insane, crazy uh, program for the people who wants to build their own SaaS business with Go High level. So I hope to see you inside, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.